Hey guys, what's up? For today's video, we will be tackling about sculptures. What is it about? It's kinds, it's examples, and it's importance in society, and what's so fascinating about it? Before we begin, don't forget to like this video, comment, share, and subscribe while hitting the notification bell so you won't miss our future uploads. Come on, join us as we explore the world of sculptures. So first, what is a sculpture? A sculpture is a three-dimensional form constructed to represent a natural and imaginary shape and its history dates back from 30,000 BCE with the Venus of Wellendorf sculpture to present day where iconic pieces of art have become the symbol of every civilization. Describe someone who creates such works. Processes in involved in this kind of art includes carving or cutting away unnecessary materials from the block, modeling or shaping and molding materials in the desired form and assembling where the artist wants to put them together. So, what are the forms of sculpture that we know? First is the relief sculpture. So, a relief sculpture is sort of like a form of sculpture that already belongs to a frame or is already part of a whole structure. This form is most commonly seen in the Philippines, specifically in churches, some government infrastructures, decorations, and a lot more. Just like the Flames of Revolution by Dan and Lydia de la Cruz and the Pageant of History by Carlos Bottom Francisco. Another is a full round sculpture or a standing sculpture which is a form of sculpture that stands freely and can therefore be viewed at any angle by the audience depending on what he or she prefers and this is also commonly used to commemorate heroes, religious figures or sometimes just decorations and examples of this are the famous Lapu Lapu Monument from Mactan Island Cebu and Bonifacio Monument by Guillermo Tolentino. We also have the modern form, which is the installation or site-specific sculpture. It is a form of sculpture that transforms an entire space into a piece of art. The fun part is, you don't need to walk through wow. to experience it. Just simply standing there, you would already appreciate its beauty. Examples include Astiopora by Leroy New and Heterotropic, by contemporary art historian Pearly Rose S. Paluya. For this featured video, sculpture work, we will briefly learning and understanding Guillermo Tolentino's iconic the oblation, which is commonly seen in the UP campuses. According to the UP Graduate Office, the oblation, or in Filipino, Pahinungod Oblacion, is a concrete statue by Filipino artist Guillermo E. Tolentino, which serves as the iconic symbol of the University of the Philippines. It depicts a man facing upward with arms outstretched, symbolizing selfless offering to oneself to his country. You know, the idea for the oblation was first conceived during the presidency of Rafael Palma of the University of the Philippines, who was the one to commission Guillermo Tolentino to make the sculpture. So, originally, the statue was completely naked, but as morality was prevailing at that time, it was modified by the former UP president, George Bukovo, with the addition of a fig leaf to cover the genitals. The sculpture was funded by the UP students of 1935 to 1936 for 2,000 pesos and was preceded over by Potenciano Ilusorio and Jose B. Laurel Jr., presidents of the student council during the first and second semester respectively and was dedicated on March 1939 at the university's Manila campus where it stayed until February 1949 when the main administrative offices of the university moved to the new Deliman campus in Quezon City. The transfer of the oblation to its new home served as the highlight of the move from Manila 
which is historically referred to as the Exodus. The sculpture in front of the Quezon Hall at Diliman was installed facing west, purportedly a tribute to the American roots of the university. Today, the sculpture is only a bronze replica, which was recast from the original in Italy in 1950 under the supervision of Tolentino himself, de dedicated on UP's Golden Jubilee on November 29, 1958, and the original sculpture is being kept at the main wow. library of Gonzales Hall, the former site of the UP College of Fine Arts. Several replicas of the oblation were made for the campuses of the University of the Philippines. That of the UP Visayas campus in Iloilo City was made by Professor Anastasio Caedo. University's literature states that Anastasio Caedo, Tolentino's student assistant, and Caedo's brother-in-law, Virgilio Raimundo, both served as the model for the oblation, using Caedo's physics and Raimundo's proportion. Wow! It is amazing to know things about sculpture especially our very own oblation by Guillermo Tolentino. I completely agree with saying, you know, it's not just about the iconic sculpture with its fascinating beauty, it also has its meaning behind which became the symbol not only for the university's philosophy but also for the entire wow! Filipino culture as well. With all of that being said, the skill in sculpting lies in the way the elements such as the line, the form, the surface, the texture, and the space reveals an idea or a message for us to decode. Whatever is means of creative expression as on a way of making use of leisure hours, sculpturing can be satisfying and rewarding as well. As what Aristotle once said, the aim of art is not purely to represent the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. As students, may we learn how to appreciate each and everyone's unique creativity because at the end of the day, it is not about the amount of brushes, stones, or paint that you have, but the courage to express oneself in the form of art for the benefit of society. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!